What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about the business that's happening tomorrow, today. Now, before I get started, yes, I'm a neo bull, but just because I'm a neo bull doesn't mean that I put my blinders on when I'm talking about neo. And so today, we're going to be talking about three stories that paint a fascinating picture of where this Chinese EV market is headed. And honestly, the chess moves being made right now are wild. We've got NEO monetizing their chip tech, finally turning one of their biggest cash burns into uh, monetary revenue. We've got Firefly making strategic expansion plays where they won't get hammered by tariffs. And then just to keep it real, we're looking at Xiaomi dropping a master class in automotive profitability. Yeah, I said it. Sometimes you got to acknowledge when someone else is cooking. So let's get into it. All right, so let's get started. According to recent reports, NEO has finally started licensing their Shenji um, NX chip. Now, they started licensing this chip to other companies, but let me tell you why this matters. For those of you who don't know, NEO unveiled this chip back in December 2023, and it's no joke. One Shenji NX 9031 chip delivers computing power equivalent to four mainstream autonomous driving chips. Their flagship ET9, which started deliveries in March, runs on two of these bad boys. Other NEO models, they're rocking one chip instead of the four NVIDIA or an X chip they used to need. But here's the kicker. Chip development is expensive. It's a notorious cash furnace. So what does NEO do? They start licensing the tech out. Now, the financial details are a little murky, but we're talking anywhere from millions of ren for a simple IP license to potentially hundreds of millions for a full system on chip technology license. And get this, back in March at the China EV100 forum, William Lee basically put out a bat signal. If you want to buy the best chips, you can come to NEO. The man wasn't playing. By June, they spun off the chip business into an independent entity called Anhui Shenji Technology with Bai Jian as the legal rep. Registration happened June 17th, and by November 14th, they're already forming joint ventures with companies like Xera Semiconductor. Now, is this about NEO becoming a chip powerhouse? Maybe. More importantly, it's turning a cost center in a, into a profit center at a time where they're hard pressed to hit their first quarter of profitability in Q4. This is smart diversification. You develop proprietary tech, prove it works. Tesla did this with batteries and charging infrastructure. Neo's doing this with chips. And timing? Chef's kits. They're cutting costs and opening up new revenue streams. That's how you play the long game. Now let's talk Firefly. This is where Neo's strategy gets really interesting. November 19th report, Firefly is entering the UK and Thailand in 2026. Right-hand drive production just started with the first batch heading to Singapore. And according to Firefly president, Daniel Jin, they're prioritizing markets without punitive tariffs. The UK, Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia. So guys, this is smart. Here's the context. The Firefly EV launched in China on April 19th this year at 119,800 Ren. That's about $16,840. It's positioned to compete with Mini and Smart. And so in Europe, they started deliveries in August in Norway and the Netherlands. But get this. The price jumped to 29,900 euros, up from the planned 25,000 euros. Why? Tariffs, baby. The EU is simply making life expensive for Chinese EVs. So instead of banging their heads against the drywall, Firefly is pivoting to right-hand drive market where they can easily compete on price and quality without regulatory tariffs banging up against their margin. Here's what I really respect. Jin's not just trying to win on price. In Singapore, he's positioning Firefly above competitors like BYD's Dolphin. He literally said, if we lower our positioning, we're done for. That's brand positioning. That's understanding that once you go down down market, you can't come back up. This isn't just about avoiding tariffs. It's about building brand equity in markets where they can actually win. They're already in the Netherlands, Norway, Belgium, Denmark, Greece, Austria, uh, Portugal and Luxembourg coming soon. Now add UK and Thailand to that 2026 pipeline. So for my Neo bulls out there, this is the patient approach. Yeah, it's not explosive growth, but it's sustainable growth. And Jen acknowledged that consumers trust takes time to build. That's just real talk. Okay, now for my part where I keep it 100 with y'all. 
let's talk about Xiaomi. Their Q3 report dropped November 18th and I gotta call it like it is. It's impressive. Q3 revenue from smart electric vehicles, 28.3 billion ren. Gross margin, 25.5%. And here's the headline. They turned an operating profit of 700 million ren, it's roughly 6,434 ran profit per car. They delivered 108,800 vehicles up from 81,300 in Q2. The average selling price was 260,000 ran per vehicle. And Liu Wei Bang, Xiaomi's president, announced they're hitting their 350,000 unit annual target this week, more than a month ahead of schedule. Based on his comments, they might actually hit 400,000 units by year's end. Now, why am I bringing all this up on a show where most of us are Neo fans? Because this is the bar. This is what the market is demanding. Xiaomi came in, leveraged their tech equals ecosystem, maintained premium positioning, and they're profitable in a year or two of production. Liu also gave a warning. 2026 is going to be brutal. Purchase tax subsidies get cut in half. Competition is intensifying and gross margins will likely compress. But he emphasized Xiaomi won't chase price wars. They're betting on innovation to drive demand. Here's my take. This proves that the, the Chinese EV market can produce profitable players. It's not a fantasy, but it requires scale, efficiency, and disciplined execution. Neo's path is different. They're going premium. They're building infrastructure with these battery swap stations. They're licensing technology. That takes longer. Neo's path is different. They're going premium. They built, they're building infrastructure with these battery swapping stations. They're licensing tech. All of that takes a lot longer, but the moat could be a lot deeper. So let's tie all of this together. Neo's playing a multi-dimensional game. They're licensing chip technology to create new revenue streams. They're strategically expanding Firefly into tariff-free markets with brand discipline. Yes, they're under pressure, but they're adapting. Meanwhile, Xiaomi is showing that profitability in the Chinese EV market is not a unicorn. It exists, it's achievable, but it requires execution at scale. For my Neo bulls, stay patient, stay informed. Chip licensing is legitimately exciting. It validates their tech and diversifies revenue. Firefly's international expansion is calculated and smart, but we gotta acknowledge the competition is real and companies like Xiaomi are setting a high bar. For everyone else, the Chinese EV space is entering a new phase. The companies that survive won't be the ones with the most hype anymore. They'll be the ones with actual legitimate revenue streams, disciplined, uh, financially disciplined business models, great brand positioning, and the ability to adapt to shifting market. That's it for today, Courtside family. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you found this episode useful, helpful, at the very least entertaining, make sure you hit the notification bell icon, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. All your engagement truly does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping me continue to post content, hosting it remotely. As you guys can see, I'm not at my place right now. I am in Michigan, but yeah. This was it for this episode of the CF Podcast. This is OB signing off. Great to speak to you guys. Great to be with you guys. Bye.